welcome to this Thursday's Trading Futures class. We welcome from this intermittent uh, little break we had uh, on this class on Trading Futures. We used to teach this and uh, over the last couple of weeks, months, we've been uh, kind of doing a little up to date for those who are coming from a street smart edge. We welcome everyone back as we actually come back to our regular uh, station uh, and the program uh, on this Thursday, as we talk about trading futures, we welcome everyone here this morning. Let's go ahead and hop right in. Now, just real quick, uh, this is live and also being recorded as well. So, uh, just real quick, uh, just know that this our this will be our normal session going forward as a heads up. Okay. Now, just real quick, also as we get started, want to just quickly remind ourselves that when we talk about futures and futures options trading and involves substantial risk not suitable for all investors. There's a separate disclosure statement for futures and options. Also understand that futures accounts are not protected by the SIPC. Also understand when we talk about examples, they are just that. We will be using the paper money software application known as the desktop version. Also remember when we talk about uh, examples, we will be looking at more examples in terms of the lens of technical analysis to make decisions, but there could be also fundamental research done on certain products where you actually think that might enhance maybe uh, that viewpoint that you have. Now, just real quick also, uh, when we talk about trading futures, it involves risk, including loss of principal. Now, we'd like to welcome Debbie, Wiley, Eva, Tom, Joe, Gary, Amanda, and many others. We welcome all of you. So just real quick, as we get started, a couple of gen items uh, that I wanna cover just right off the bat. So I wanna kind of make sure that we kind of get back on track to where we were some of you were there before, some of you are brand new to this, and I wanna just kind of make sure what are some resources that you should be made aware of immediately, okay? So let's cover these first, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into markets, kind of look and kind of see where are some potential opportunities and why futures, and then we're gonna lastly talk about some futures example trades. So first off, what I'm gonna do is let's go to the schwab.com website. If we go to the schwab.com website and we log in, you're gonna see at the very top, you're gonna to see learn and then courses, okay? Just like we did with the fundamental class yesterday, just a lot of people might not know that this is here and I wanna make sure you know immediately, okay? If we take a look at this, what you're gonna notice is if I go to learn and then courses, it talks about simple steps for, for retirement. There's the fundamental analysis plan that we talked about from yesterday. And if we keep scrolling down, what you're going to notice is technical analysis, income investing, options for beginners, et cetera. Okay. And if we scroll down, ah, right there. The last one in the list is fundamentals of futures trading. Okay. Now, what you're going to notice is if we click on that, you're now going to see that we have lessons for that. Okay. Introdu introduction or introducing futures trading. You're also going to see futures basics, portfolio hedging course wrap up and also final assessment and an example, okay, an example of fundamentals of futures trading investing plan. Interesting, okay? So if we click on that, you're now gonna see that sample plan and it, you're gonna see that there's a disclosure right up front that it is a sample plan and it also breaks down like uh, portfolio hedging purpose. Why would someone do that? What could they do it on? You're also gonna see that where it talks about kind of position sizing and routines, et cetera. And that's gonna be something that we focus on as well. So that's first, okay? So first homework assignment is if you haven't even looked at the online course, now you know what you're doing today, okay? Now, number two, this webpage I think is also very important, okay? You're gonna see that this is from the schwab.com website. Oh man, let me see if I, not sure if, let me see if I can take out some of that extra stuff on the end. Hopefully that's going to work. Let me see if I can get to that exact page. Yeah, that would uh, that'll work. Let me send this to you. This is going to get you to the overview page. Let me just take that off. It was too long before. And now what you're going to notice is this will get us to the Schwab futures page where it's on overview. You're going to see tabs like inter introduction to futures futures market, wide trade futures through us, et cetera. So if I click on inter, inter, introduction to futures, okay, click on it, you're gonna see there's also some resources there for you. Poke around on this, get familiar with kind of some of that information there. Very helpful, futures markets, okay. 
And now the other one I want to kind of bring up is this, which is really just going to the third tab over. This is a shorter address. I want to get you specifically to this address, okay? So you might be thinking, well, what type of futures are there category-wise, uh, symbols? Uh, do they have options on them? What's the multiplier? Uh, what's the tick size? What's the sediment? What's the trading hours? This page that I just sent you, okay, is going to get you to that. Now, what you're going to notice is there's a category of micros, which is just a fractional value. Uh, think of it as a smaller value of, let's say, trading the standard contracts. We'll get more into that. We have stock indices, as you know, metals, energy, agriculture, currency, interest rates, and crypto. So think of the categories of futures like sectors in stocks. Okay, now you're going to see that if you said, where can I see all of like what's available, just like on a little uh, page like this, well, right here, and you're going to notice that we have the symbols, okay, and what are the trading hours, okay? Now, you're going to see where it says also stock indices, okay? Scroll down metals. So if you said, well, how would I know what's the symbol for gold? How do I know what's the symbol for uh, copper? And also with gold and silver and copper, are there micro contracts for those as well, okay? Now, notice the difference here. When you look at, let's say, GC or gold, it's the multiplier is 100. So for every contract, if we had a contract and it moves a point, it's $100. If we do the micro gold contract, it, if it moves a dollar or one point, I should say, it's worth $10. So it's a tenth scale of the bigger contract. We're going to get into that. We have energy, which we'll follow. There's crude oil. There's micro crude oil, okay? And as we scroll down, agriculture, okay? Currency, interest rates, crypto, and also what's called softs, okay? So when you kind of look at what's available, the answer is quite a bit, okay? And what you're gonna notice is we have standard contracts, but also we have many future, many micros as well. Now, the one thing I want to make sure that you understand is when you look at, let's say, scroll back up to this page, if we click on see more, okay, if I click on see more, there's other ones as well, that these are the micros. So this is just the listing for all, what are all the micros on one page? This is, I think, is important because this gives you like an immediate watch list. If you said, I want to create a watch list of, let's say, micros, well, here's a watch list, okay, right here. So just make sure that you see that you can click on, let's say, see less or see more, and it's just an expand that. Now, last one I want to do is if we go to the futures, uh, just one more spot where we could get some information on futures. This actually is taking us to the learn page on futures, looking to futures, and what you're now going to notice is there's some interesting articles about futures. How does margin work? Okay. This would be some good reading or I wonder if I want to trade futures on Thinkorswim Mobile, okay? How do I trade on the desktop, okay? Little articles, okay, that you can read. So take a look at those. I just want to make sure you have those resources. I think they are helpful. And I've read through them. And, uh, you know, it's a nice way to really kind of learn some of the ins and outs of futures. Now, what I want to do now is let's kind of now go to a, one more spot. So what I'm going to do is, I am now going to go to the Thinkorswim platform, the desktop. What we're now going to do is where we can see also futures is we can go to the trade tab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the little drop down right here. Now, think of this as we have all recent positions, futures, where we can also see uh, those that, that futures list. The difference is here is it's not broken down by category. It's just A to Z of pretty much all the futures. So the way we got here is we went to trade, hit the drop down, and just go to the futures tab. When we go to the futures tab, this is also helpful for us because we can see the symbol, description, the tick size or how much it moves in increments by, what is that value worth per contract? And then what does the investor need to initially set aside to enter into the position, okay? Now, what I wanna kind of do just real quick is let's kind of just take a look at where the futures are, and then we're gonna transition to example trades, okay? 
Now, uh, first thing that we want to do is, if we're going to talk, if I want to make it a kind of, let's kind of imagine that we're stock investors, maybe we trade options potentially, whatever, okay? And of course, we're probably going to look at the the indices and how are, see how they're moving. Let's take a look at those together. Now, notice on the left-hand side, let's just kind of start with the ESs. So nice way to start, just general market. What do we have here? So the first thing that we actually have, again, we want to, let's kind of imagine that we're talking about that this was a stock. And we're going to look at this and compare it to where's the price in relationship to the moving averages? Same thing, okay? Today, what we would have to at least say is the price got above the shorter term moving average. That's not bad, okay? Not above the secondary moving average, the lagging one, but it's right there. Decent move on the S&P, 34.75 points, 0.65%. That's on the S&P. When you look at the NASDAQ itself, we actually see that it's not only gotten above the shorter term moving average, it's also gotten above the secondary moving average, the 20 period. Okay, So the NASDAQ so far being a little stronger. If we take a look at the Dow futures, zoom in, of the three that we looked at so far, which one is lagging the most? It's the Dow that's lagging the most. It is above the 10, but it's not up as far as the S&P, and it's definitely not up as far as the NASDAQ. Last, if we look at the last one, the Russell, you're going to see that it's kind of right probably in line with where the S&P is. Got above the 10 and very close to the 30, okay? not the 30, excuse me, the 20 period moving average. Now, just real quick, let's start with an example. If I asked you, can you maybe pick one index that you would like to do a practice trade on, which one would you pick? The NASDAQ, the S&P, the Dow, or the Russell? Which one? Now, I'm gonna kind of wait and kind of see your response but I, I want to kind of grab one that you would be interested in. So let me kind of, for example, just see uh, which one you would say is of interest. Now, if we actually bring this up, so Joe says the Russell, David says the Dow, David says, uh, so David Cooley says the Dow, <laughs> David says the rut, Helen says the Indy, uh, oh man, this is going to be a tie, okay? So probably most of what I'm seeing is the NASDAQ, Let's just kind of use the NASDAQ for a quick example, okay? So remember when we look at the forward slash NQ, okay? They call it the E-mini NASDAQ, okay? Futures. Now, let's kind of go back to just real quick, the little drop down right there. And when we hit the drop down right on the chart, so we're on the charts tab, we have forward slash NQ. And all we did here in this case is we just hit the drop down. Now, here's what's kind of nice here. When we actually hit the drop down, it automatically goes to that product. It tells us the tick size. So this 0.25, think of that as a quarter. How many quarters are in a dollar? We, we know there's four, okay? How many quarters are there in a point? Four, okay? For every 0.25 or a quarter it moves, it's worth $5. Okay, so it's moving at a quarter point up or down. That movement, if you get it right, is worth $5 a contract. This is what the investor would need to set aside initially to enter into the position. Now, what, let's kind of play the game of wonder if someone said, well, geez, that seems like it's a, it's a lot. Well, let's do this. What can we actually do here? We could go right here to the MNQ, the micro. Now, if you said, well, I didn't know like the list. Well, let's just quickly remind ourselves the reason why we actually went over what we did this morning with this list. If you are just joining us, just make sure that you understand that you can take that, what I just sent you in the chat, and this is going to give you the information of what features are available and additional information. So if we go back to this, we're going to use the example of not the M, the not the NQ. We're going to use the example of MNQ. Now, I'm going to say that probably 70-ish percent, two-thirds-ish of all our examples are going to be using micros, which is a fractional value, uh, a tenth of a value of the standard contract. Now, what you're going to notice is 
it moves in the same incremental value, known as the tick size. It actually is not moving up $5 a point, it's 50 cents, okay? It's a tenth of the standard contract. You also notice that the margin requirement is a tenth of what the big contract is, okay? So it's the same idea, it's actually just using a different, uh, a different value that it's controlling. Now, what I'm gonna do in this case is we're gonna zoom in on this chart and let's kind of practice that we're gonna look to do a bullish trade on the NASDAQ. Now, we're gonna go to the trade tab now. And if we go to the trade tab, what you're gonna notice is, I mean, we're talking about futures. So if we're talking about, we know that if we talk about options, there's forward expirations, okay? Like April, May, June, July, August. Well, the same thing goes with futures. When we look at futures, you might have where it says active only. Well, if you can click on the drop down and you can go to where it says all. If you go to where it says all, what you're gonna notice is it's gonna show the different expirations out in time. Now notice MNQ is the product. The, the U, the M, the U, the Z, the H, M, that's the month. And 24 or 25, as you can imagine, is the year, okay? So we're gonna look at where do we see the volume now? Well, if we go over here on this table and say, where is the volume? I'm not even sure if it's a really a comparison. 331 contracts, 331,000 contracts on the Junes and the September drops off a lot and the December drops off a lot. Now you don't have to trade, for example, the, the Junes, but I just wanna at least show you, you can kind of see what are some of these pricings uh, going into the future and where that information is. So just like if we were gonna do a stock trade, we're gonna right click. Now look at the bid, look at the ask, okay? Bid, ask. So if we look at this, I'm gonna write, and if you look at that and say, what's the difference between the bid and ask? It's pretty much 0.25, okay? Pretty much what it is. Sometimes it's 0.5, uh, half a point. We're gonna actually right click on this. We're actually gonna go to where it says buy custom, with OCO bracket. Now, if you're a stock trader, you'd say, James, I've seen this before. We're gonna do the exact same format. Right click on the ask price, buy custom with OCO bracket. We're gonna click on that. Now we get the order, just like we would see with the stock trade. Entry for the future position. How do I know if this is a future? Uh, so first off, the symbol would tell you that. The type of asset it is, labeled there, future. Okay, now, if we take also a look at this position, we're gonna go back to the chart for just a moment, and I need some help in terms of seeing maybe where to set that stop. And I also wanna kind of look and see, run the numbers as far as maybe what the potential loss could be. So here we have the diagonal support. And we've said since Tuesday that we're kind of at a critical juncture of can we get a bounce off the support level? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark this chart as of 18,308, that that's the support level, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is, there's not any magical number. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the support of 18,308, and we're gonna set a stop 50 points below that. So we're taking 18,308, Okay, example given, less 50 points, it's gonna get us 18,258. Okay, now let's imagine that we got in right now at 18,534, and we're gonna set a stop at 18,258. We wanna know how many points that is. Well, 18,534 less 18,258, the answer is it's 276 points, okay? Now, I kind of feel like it's an arcade. I got so many tickets, how much are the tickets worth? Well, so here's the deal. It's 276 points. How much is each point worth? Well, every point is worth $2. Now, if the price were gonna go down, it would go down 276 points. So if we go down 276 points times two, the potential loss 
would really be $552 losing. Now, is it guaranteed to only lose that much? No, it could gap down. Okay, it could gap down. So we know that when we talk about setting a stop, the risk is it could go down more aggressively below that and even incur a larger loss. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to click on OK. Do, does anyone have any questions with that? Okay. If we're talking about a potential target, now, just basic technical analysis. If we kind of take the tops of this, touch, 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 multiple touches, and I'm going to extend that into the future. We're actually going to extend to the right. And if we go and say, okay, where is the top of that channel? If we went straight up, where, where is that level? How many points is it? Well, let's double check. We'll run the numbers. So if we actually go straight up, 18,908. So what, we're, what we want to kind of see in this case is how many points is that? Let's mark this down. Let's say it goes to 18,900. We're at eight, whoop, we're at 18,530-ish. Check me if I'm wrong. That's about 200, nope, 370 points, okay? Every point worth $2, and if it goes up to the top of the channel and hits out, it's approximately $740 potential gain, okay? Is everyone with me on that? Now, this kind of brings up why a stock investor might consider using futures, especially micro futures. How many of you have been thinking over the last couple of weeks, geez, I would like to buy the index, maybe the S&P, like uh, something that tracks the index or uh, something that tracks the index of the NASDAQ. And you pulled it up and you said, my gosh, the dadgum thing's $519 a share. Well, how many did you buy? You, you say, I didn't buy any because it's too expensive. This is why some people use futures. Now, you don't have to use the standard E-mini contracts. You might say, I'm going to use the E, the, the micro contracts, and get exposure to the indexes for a directional play or an investment, a trade. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to this. Let's put these numbers here. We're going to take 18,900. Okay, same thing as you would do with the stock. Got a target price there. This is a bracket order. And the last one in this case is going to be 18,258. Okay, day to GTC. Now, when we kind of look at, let's say, our trades that we're going to be doing going forward, let's kind of imagine that what percent of the trades are probably going to be based upon the indices. Uh, we probably say 50% of our examples are going to be indice type of trades, whether they're speculating on upward direction or hedging if the index were going to go down. So I, you're going to see this a lot, okay? So this is probably going to be like, if we're talking about category, looking at the indices is probably going to be half of the positions. You're going to get a lot of practice with this. Now, if we actually said, well, how many contracts could we do? If we said we could risk $600 hypothetically every trade, we would only be doing one contract. If we could risk, let's say, $1,200 a contract, $1,200 a trade, we'd be doing two contracts. Okay. Any questions with that? Now, what I'm going to do is confirm and send. Now, the extra information we need to show here is notice what does it cost? Well, explicitly, the commission, 225. 225 to get in per contract, 225 to get out. How much money do this, does the investor need to set aside to enter into the position? Answer, uh, for one contract, we will do this in the margin account. What is it? Answer, 1947. Now, I want you to kind of compare and contrast that if you were going to do this, let's say, buy a product that tracks the NASDAQ itself. And what you're going to see is it's not the same. Okay, not even close, okay? Now, what we're going to do is let's send the order and see what it looks like. Let's see if we get a fill. Now, that order is sitting right there. Where's the price? I got 18513 We got a price of 18516 How do you get this volume off, okay? Well, if we want to get that volume off right there, let's go to application settings, and uh, let's one other way we could do it, double check. Yeah, 
Let me go to just right there. If you have that volume in there, click on the icon of the settings, go to futures, okay? And then uncheck volume subgraph, okay? So trade number one here, if we can get a fill, which we might have to move up the order just a smidge, apply it, okay, and now that comes off. Now, sometimes when we're looking to get in, it might move a little bit. And looking at this chart on a daily time frame can be hard. What we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna go D, and let's go to like maybe a five day, 15 minute. Let's click on that. Now, if I click on five day, 15 minute, now what we can do is zoom in and see where the order is, okay? And I'm gonna kind of highlight, zoom in on this and see where our order is. Now, and it's still, might even have to go to five minute. So what you're gonna notice is that's where our order is, 18,513. I'm gonna move this order up right on the chart. Do not click on the X, it will cancel the order. And I'm gonna click and drag it up to where the current price is now to try to get a fill, okay? Now, usually when I do this in a class, then it comes down to where the initial order is. And that's why I'm being a little slower to see if I can get a fill. So I'm gonna send it. Now, notice now it filled at 18,515. We're now gonna go back to where we can go to the trade tab like you would see with a stock position. If we own the position, you're now gonna see the row down below. We have one contract. The trade price was where it was entered. The mark is where it is now. That difference between those two numbers, well, that's the points. And then if we take a look at this and say the, the plus or minus, whatever it is, that's how much we're up on that, that does not include the commission, okay? Now, John actually says, is the fact that futures accounts are not protected uh, by the SIPC a big concern? So if you were actually saying, hey, uh, you know, what is the SIPC? Now, by the way, I wanna kind of bring something up. If you had like a question on that, like, hey, what is the SIPC? Some of you might be saying, I don't even know what the SIPC is. Uh, you might even say, uh, so first off, if you had questions, for example, on, uh, let's get see, see how we support your trading. Let me actually, okay, this page right there. Let me go to this. Let me send that back out. If you had questions on that, on like, is SIPC, like FDIC, is it covered up to a certain amount or is it not covered at all? That'd be a question. Just you could actually call uh, the number that should be down at the bottom of that page. And what you're gonna no notice is you could ask that question, like what is that risk? So what you're gonna see is if you had like a question, uh, you could actually uh, call, let me put that number in there. So if you had a specific question about that, okay? Or chat, notice actually right down at the bottom. So feel free to call and ask that question. Is it covered up to a certain amount? Is it not covered at all? Uh, ask the question, okay? And uh, now by the way, just because you have a stock account does not mean you're allowed to trade futures. Like options, you need approval, okay? And if you said, well, how would I, for example, uh, and get my questions answered how to do that, the, the last link that I sent you is very important. You want to open an account or consider opening an account, you could actually talk to someone and actually get some help there. Now, one thing I also want to kind of make mention, we have talked about going long the futures. But wonder if you wanted to go short the futures. Shorting, some of you might not know, is just taking a bearish position. When we talk about the indices, sometimes there might be investors that say, look, I wanna go bearish, okay? One thing that we need to just kind of make a point of is if someone actually does go short or selling short and they establish a position, okay? The upside risk to that position can be unlimited, okay? And that's the risk to a short, just like in a stock position. It could gap up, okay? And the risk could be to unlimited. There is no upside cap, even if you have a resting order. So if you've ever short sold stock before, you know that's a risk. Just because you set a stop above doesn't guarantee it's gonna fill at that price. So that's why some investors like to be long only. Now, let me show you just kind of some quick examples. If we go back to the IRA, the last week or two, we've been showing examples of futures trades. 
Let me just kind of show you an example where they are. We've talked about, for example, let's say micro gold. These are trades that were like a week ago. We see that, for example, when you take a look at this, micro gold was purchased at 2200. It's now at 2307. Okay. So it's gone up higher than where the entry price was. What you're going to notice is we also see micro crude oil. And what you're going to notice is we bought oil itself. Buying crude oil, the futures contract, it doesn't have earnings. It doesn't have a CEO. It doesn't have a CFO. Nothing. It's just buying the futures contract at that price and trying to speculate as if maybe the price could go higher. Now, I want to kind of bring something up here for just a second. Let's imagine that you had the position and you wanted to exit the position. How do you do that? Well, let's kind of use this micro crude oil as an example. If we wanted to exit the position when you don't know what to do, right click on the line, create closing order, and we're just going to go to sell. That is no different than if you just did that with the stock position. Okay, now what page are we on? Monitor tab. The monitor tab monitors the orders and the positions. If we want to sell the position, okay, open it up, expand it, click on that line, right click, create closing order, and sell. Now, just like with op, like equity options, you don't have to hold to the expiration. You might want to try to get in and out prior to the expiration. We're going to try to sell micro crude oil and set up a new position. We're going to send this order, and we're going to try to harvest that gain right there. Now, when was that trade entered? Last week. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to send that order, confirm and send, and notice the commission, 225 per contract to get in, 225 to get out. Send the order, and now we're going to try to grab that gain right there, that $382. Now, speaking of crude oil, we're now going to go to the chart. Let's go back to that, let's say, one-year daily. Now, we talked about equ like equity futures are probably going to be 50%. We probably say another 10% is probably going to be trading oil, okay? Now, you might say, I'm not going to do that. Fine. But for our class purposes, oil is going to be a focus. Now, if I were to ask you, are you would you consider being bullish on oil or bearish on oil? What would you say? Okay. Now, what I'm going to do on this chart is we have the, if we look at this right at the very top, micro crude oil futures, what expiration is this? This is the May 24 expiration. Okay. Now, as I'm getting an answer back, I'm also going to go to the trade tab and I want to just double check how many days are there left to expiration. Okay, just like you would do with an equity option. You don't just blindly say, oh, yeah, it's just, it's just the April. Let's get in. You want to verify how many days there are to expiration. And is that the time frame that you're looking for? Is that appropriate? Well, this has 15 days left to expiration. So if we if the, if the paper money account does this, yeah, 15 days. We'd probably say 10 days because the goal is not to hold to the literal expiration day, just like equity options. Now, what we're going to do in this case is, could we consider maybe going to the June expiration? Yes. For this purpose, we're going to show that, okay? One of the investors said, geez, I, I don't really plan to trade oil that short term. Can I go down to, let's say, the June expiration? Yes. Let's verify the bid-ask spread, just like we would with stocks and options. It's two pennies wide. Now, if we said, well, James, I am, I don't know the incremental movement. How much does this move by? Does it move in pennies? Does it move in nickels? Does it move in dimes? And what is that value worth? Oh, let's go check. Well, we're going to click on the drop down arrow that we talked about before. Hit the drop down. It automatically goes to the symbol that you're looking at. Okay. And it's the tick size. So when I say tick size, don't get confused by that. So what's the tick size of Apple? Let's say the tick size of Apple is a penny. Same thing here. Stocks, the most of the ones we look at, move in penny increments. So it, so does MCL. Now, what you're going to notice is what is that one that one cent worth? If you get the direction right, answer, $1. Now, what you first should realize is when we say futures, all futures are not the same. 
because they're controlling a different notional value. So if someone said, I trade futures, and you say, oh my gosh, that's so risky, you need to ask more information like, what type of futures are you trading? Now, we're not diminishing, okay? We're just saying an MCL contract is not the same as a CL contract. That's my point. The value of the movement is not the same. The other thing you'll, you'll notice is the amount of money set aside to initially get in the position is not the same either. Now, again, 70-ish percent of all our examples as you're learning futures, if you're a beginner and intermediate, 70% of the time, we're probably going to be using micros so you can practice trade in a paper money account. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the June expiration right there, okay? We're going to right-click. Now, notice if you look at the volume right there, 1,500. There's some volume there. We're going to right-click on the ask price. Guys, how, Angus, how different is this with stocks? The order type is the same. Right-click on the ask price. When you right-click on the ask price, we get a menu. Buy custom with OCO bracket. Now, is there a one-click functionality? Is there another way to do it on the chart? Yes, yes, yes. We're just doing it on the trade tab so we can start somewhere. The reason why we're starting on the trade tab is we want to see other expirations as well to verify is that the expiration we want to be in for our example. We're going to go to buy custom with OCO bracket. There it is. Green line for the buy, and we have the target and the stop. Now, if we take a look at this, what you're going to notice is we need a target. And by the way, I need to know where your target would be on this. Second, I need to know where your stop would be. Now, if we take a look at this, we're going to go to the charts, okay? And we're going to bring up that order down below where we can see this, and I'm going to zoom in. And if you don't mind, so we just have a little bit more real estate on the bottom, I'm going to even take off the relative strength, okay? So if I said to you, where do you see a potential target, where do you see it? Okay, now I'm going to kind of mark some, mark some areas in the chart that you might be thinking and I'm going to kind of mark these two areas. Are you thinking maybe potentially the same level? Michael says 90. Joe says 90. Okay, so 90 is that first level. Let's kind of use that as our example area of resistance. Now, let's quickly run through the numbers, okay? So all we're going to do is say, look, if we go from 80, let me change the color here. If we go from 82.65 up to 90, how much is that? Well, if you go up, that's $5.35, okay? Now, for every penny that it moves in our direction, it's it's a dollar, okay? So you could actually think of this, for every penny it moves, it's a dollar per contract, okay? Now, what would it be worth if it moved one full dollar? Can anyone tell me what that is? If it moves a dollar, how much would it be worth per contract? Answer, survey says, bing, it's $100, okay? So if we move up, not a dollar, but $5.35, we're just gonna take that number and times it by 100. If we get the direction right, if we do, if, 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 it'd be $535, okay? That would be the potential gain. So if we go from here up to that 90, potential $535. Now, here's the deal. We don't have earnings, okay? We're not in a sector. This is taking a look at crude oil, the price itself for the May delivery, okay? The reason why we're picking the June expiration is we want a little bit more time for this to play out. Now, you talk about the upside. What about the downside? If we looked at this and said, well, what about the downside? Can we trade the exits and entries like we do with the stock positions using the whole moving average? Answer, yes. Now, I'm going to set a stop right underneath where the breakout area was. And just like we said before, there is no magic number. We're going to set a stop right at about 82.20, okay? Now, all I'm doing there is I'm taking the breakout area less 50 cents. That's going to get us down to 82.20. Just like we did before. What's the points? Well, $2.45 times 100. 
So if we go down to that number of 8220 or less or less, okay? The the loss would be forecast to be $245, but with a stop order, it, we know that the loss could be more if it were to have let's say a gap, okay? Now, so the biggest actually and one of the risks we saw with oil is oil can go below zero, okay? Pretty pretty unusual, but it did. Now, the biggest thing is here, this is long, okay, with a stop, and we're going to put this in the margin account, okay? Now, we're going to do one contract, margin, okay? And what we're going to do is 225 to get in, 225 to get out at the target of the stop, and there's the numbers that we already did manually, and how much does the investor need to set aside to be in the position? Answer? $600. We're going to send the order and it fills. Where could we see the order or a place? Let's go to the trade tab. And what you're now going to notice is when we go to the trade tab, we can actually see the position that we have. What was the trade price? What's the mark? Now, how many pennies are we above the trade price? Answer two. When we go over to the profit loss open, we should be up $2. Okay. Now, that profit loss does not include the commission. It's just looking to see how much is it above the entry price. Now, we need to kind of just kind of state one other point. When we talk about these orders, we assume the order pr orders fill at or near the discussed price. There are also conditions where futures orders are not guaranteed in execution. Due to the exchange's rules based on certain conditions at time of activation, the exchange may reject or substitute, substitute uh, a limit order for originally triggered market order based on price protection. Please understand the implications as an order may not ultimately fill as intended. So the biggest actually thing is this is why liquidity, 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 liquidity is so important. Just like you would in the stock world, do not think that if you buy a tech stock, that if I bought uh, tech holdings from nowhere America, that it's gonna have the same liquidity as Microsoft. Certain futures products and certain, certain aspirations are gonna have different amounts of liquidity. And so if you go into something that doesn't really have liquidity, you need to just be careful of that and understand that, that you could be uh, impacted by the potential fill or not being filled at all, okay? So understand that. Now, the other thing is I want to kind of make mention of, we, we're going to close up shop here, but the biggest thing is when we look at, let's say, gold, uh, when we talk about the gold from uh, last week, we got that order filled, uh, gold sitting right there, the bigger contract, we did our crude oil right there. Okay, we'll talk more about those, but just kind of summing this up, about 50% of our examples are going to be index-based, probably another 10% crude oil, another 10% gold. Probably would say another 10% would be, let's say, currency futures, okay? If if the dollar goes down, we'd probably say another 10% would also be interest rate futures. That is really the categories or the types of products that we're really going to focus on like we did in the future. Remember, two-thirds of our examples are going to really be micro future based, okay? And it, we're going to be using the paper money account to practice this going forward. So in wrapping up, what I want to make, make sure we say is make sure that you actually realize this has been live and recorded, okay? Second, we will follow through on these trades just like we did historically. The other thing is make sure I sent to you in the chat really the links of material that you should actually bookmark and review. Make sure you definitely have that page where it really goes over the types of products for sure, okay? That's gonna be a nice way. And also remember that you have that online course as well. If you have not subscribed to the Trader Talks channel by Schwab Coaching, make sure you do that. You can see all of our content right on YouTube. Also remember that coming up uh, right here uh, for this Thursday, we got Long Verticals and Diagonals by Ben. And also I'll be back on later today on Trading the Trend as well at 1 p.m. Eastern. I want to thank you so much for your comments and your participation.
Remember what we actually said? It was done for example, illustrative purposes only. And we will actually have, continue our conversation going forward next week. But I want to kind of give you an expectation of what you can expect going forward. Thank you so much for your comments and your participation. Thank you, Ken Rose, as well. And great to be back with you as we talk about trading futures. Take care. See you later today. Bye-bye.